Minister for Education. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I take the opportunity today to update the House uh, and indeed the community about some of the information uh, in relation to the way that the Department for Education and the Marshall Liberal Government are supporting students with disability uh, in the South Australian uh, public school system. Uh, this is, of course, a, a very important task of government uh, to ensure that all of our students and our children and our young people are uh, given the best possible opportunity throughout their education uh, to access a world-class education, to set them on a pathway uh, towards success in life, uh, towards being able to be their best selves. Um, Sir, of course, there are many contexts in which we support our children in uh, the government school system, uh, in mainstream schools, uh, in the classrooms, with funding allocated to provide additional support in the classroom, uh, in special schools, in disability units, in special classes. I can advise the House that at the Term 1 census this year, 82.6 per cent of students with disability attend mainstream schools. 17.4% uh, attend a special option. That's uh, 1,022 in special schools in South Australia, 872 in disability units, and 1,383 in special classes. Uh, to help uh, people understand what the difference between those three terms uh, means, special classes are located in mainstream schools and cater for junior primary, primary or secondary students who require substantial adjustments to the curriculum. Students are provided with a high level of support and opportunities to learn in conjunction with their age-appropriate peers and be included as much as possible. It's certainly a, a reasonably normal thing from time to time. Students might move from a special class to a mainstream setting in certain circumstances or indeed uh, back the other way. Disability units in special schools are a bit different, although sometimes students move between uh, them as well in certain circumstances. Uh, disability units are located within some primary and secondary schools. They cater for students who require extensive adjustments to access the curriculum, extensive adjustments being individualised, comprehensive and ingoing. And in addition to accessing curriculum, students often need support with their personal care. Our special schools are mostly co-located with mainstream schools, although a couple are standalone. They provide extensive adjustments to curriculum, high levels of personal care, and students enrolled in disability units in special schools often have a similar profile. Now, in relation to the supports that are available for students in mainstream settings, I'm pleased to advise the House that in 2020, $305 million, in excess of $305 million, was expended in support for children with disability, including specialised education options, individual funding, including IASP, uh, the, in uh, the Inclusive Education Support Program, and the Resource Allocation Adjustment Panel. And indeed, uh, that site-based funding compares to $240 $1 million in 2018. It's a 26 per cent increase in funding uh, in, the last, in the first uh, two and a half to three years of the Marshall Liberal Government. That additional funding has supported more children and students than ever before. Uh, as at the term three census last year, that was 21,115.7 FTE students supported under the IESP. Uh, and indeed, uh, that represents an increase of 10.5 per cent from the previous year, where it was 19,111. Um, the largest increases occurred in areas of autism and complex social and emotional behaviour. Changes have been made to the current IESP funding allocation process to reduce the workload pressure associated with the submission of reviews, while making sure our schools and preschools are equipped to provide the support needed to children and students with functional needs. These changes have included, uh, in recent weeks, we've announced that we're pausing IESP reviews for at least two years uh, with funding to continue. That's been significantly welcomed by a range of educators. We have provided additional funding for children in care at key transition points in our schools and preschools, noting the additional challenges that that can present. And we've also support, provided one-off funding to support children in care already enrolled at schools, to help those schools provide the services that is needed. Now, um, individual funding applications under the IESP consider the functional need and adjustments required for the child or student. Thanks to the introduction of this new model, students are now funded according to their functional need rather than their disability diagnosis or label. As such, a diagnosis or final assessment is not, uh, is not anymore always a prerequisite for requesting additional funding. Uh, schools still have access to IESP funding while students are waiting to be assessed, including by way of upfront grants provided to schools and preschools. And during this time, schools are able to provide learning support to these students to continue their education. This is a tremendously important body of work, and it's a body of work that I thank our educators right across South Australia for undertaking. There is always uh, more to do, and every year I believe we are getting better at doing this work. But the commitment that
that I make, the commitment the Marshall Liberal Government has made, is that the funding in this area will continue to increase to support the level of demand that is needed in our system and to support the best interests in wellbeing and welfare and the education of these very important children and young people.